Now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. It's Puckle! Puckle! It's Puckle! Puckle! Pokemon Underground Champions League, oh yeah! Puckle! Breakfast burrito, yum yum. Breakfast burrito, a breakfast burrito. And welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, the nonsensical name we came up with in 2007. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my wonderful co host. We've got the one, the only, and some might say he's here, Lord Yushiro. Some might say I'm here, others might say that my brain is still in bed. Good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, and then of course we've got the indubitable Claude Nine. Indubitably! I don't actually know what that word means off the top of my head, but I used it for you today. I I, I just had fun. Yep, alright, and so welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, stands for the Pokemon Underground's Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007. We talk everything here about the video game. From the trading card game to the video game to everything in between. Uh, and we, uh, yeah, we just have fun and we talk about it. And we've been doing it for way too oh, long. Yeah. So uh, I want everybody to know at home, if you're listening to this right now, we are doing this show live on Twitch this week because we are raising money for the St. Baldrick's Foundation, a uh, foundation for uh, childhood cancer research. So, uh, we appreciate everybody who's here to donate. Unfortunately, the event ends that we're taking part in. It's called Catch a Million. Uh, unfortunately, it ends at noon today <laughs> as of recording. <laughs> so it does not uh, get to go forward for anybody. So I apologize in advance uh, <laughs> to everybody involved. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, though, and we are going to uh, just uh, get into the show, though. Um Thank you to everybody who's donated so far, and thank you to everybody who's listening. Uh, We really appreciate it. You can, of course, just always donate to the St. Baldrick's Foundation without being part of the event, but just letting you all know. (laughs) Um, It's a great great, uh, cause to raise money for and also to donate to. Uh, But on top of that, uh, that's what I've been doing this week, by the way. I've just been playing a lot of Pokemon on stream. I think I've played more more Pokemon this week than I have in a week in a very long time. (laughs) Actually, we- same. Yeah, I heard you were playing Unite. I finally got the courage to play Unite, and unfortunately, now I'm stuck playing Unite because I can't stop playing Unite. It is. It is addictive. Indu- it is very addictive, especially since I have friends. I'm playing with my old school friends from middle and high school. Yeah, right? yeah. the 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 OG. Uh, uh, Pokemon friends from kids, and it's just been a blast. Uh, that game is way too much fun. I've become an expert in like two weeks. It's it's incredible. Um, it, is a, it is a lot of fun. It's it's like um it's very much like Splatoon, where it's easy to yes. just keep going yeah. because the match lengths aren't super long. And unlike other mobas like nope. I, like League of Legends or Dota, where the games take like mm-hmm. a half hour to an hour. No, it's, perfect uh, timing. Very, Ten minutes every yeah. match. Mm-hmm. Ten minutes. It, yeah. it, it's, it's very yeah. It's very very nice compared to uh, doing some, like a I I don't want to say like a real moba, but like another moba that's uh, popular. Right. Well, like, as I, far as I understand, they're trying their best not to call this a moba. They're like, it's not a moba. Uh, it it's is a moba. Just a they, I, game, but it's a moba. I'm pretty sure they called it a moba, and I'm pretty sure all they're trying to do is be like, let's not look at who actually developed it. Okay. There's no uh, yeah. there's no ethical concerns there or anything. <laughs> there's no ethical concerns. It's fine. Just play right. Pokemon Unite. Uh, we're gonna look the other right. way. And uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. I still enjoy big, Pokemon Unite. I haven't played in a few months, but I would love yeah. to. Uh, get big again. update this week. Uh, things change. A lot of things happen. Body barrier got nerfed. Oh, Score God. shield That's got good. nerfed. Good. Uh, new Pokemons were announced. Espeon and Delphox are on their way. Good. Um, fun. Now yeah, we just need it's, it, it's at a fun time. We need Chespin. Chespin's the uh, the real the real goat. That's who right. we need. I don't know. They're going to put almost every Pokemon in this game, I swear. No. I think they're going to cap it under the post. I don't know. We've got, yeah, they're, they're not going to cap it. 
claw. Yeah, the average, the play. average mob MOBA, it's like a hundred characters, so yeah. they they have a lot of characters to add. Yeah, there are still ways to get, and it, so like it, even if you consider, like I I think almost every Pokemon will get some sort of form of representation in Unite, almost every single one. Oh yeah, because maybe you, not eventually. To, not to mention just yeah. like well, you you I'm including like the mobs and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, so m my thought is that. Once you know Scarlet and Violet comes out, they're gonna put some of those characters, oh, those final evolutions, absolutely in, in there to like double, like you know, oh, get the new game as well. Yeah, no, oh, no, yeah. no. They, no uh, I think right. I think there's no way they don't drop like all three Scarlet Violet starters, like right. Yeah, or like a cover legend or something like that. Yeah, I, there's no way they don't just drop that in. I think the cover legend <laughs> might be pushing it because I think they do a really good job, including the legends and their in like the various modes, like they do with Zapdos. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant. Like, they might replace Zapdos for a while oh, with, they you know, the cover legend. They absolutely will. I have no doubt they will do that. I, I really, uh, I really like that. Uh, and uh, now that out. now that we have, yeah, and now that we have Sylveon and now Espeon, we're that much closer to having a full team of <laughs> Eevee running around. I think it'll happen, and it I, will be I hilarious. But that I, meme I, I, material I'm not right there. I mean, it's going to happen. Like this, it was inevitable. As soon as they announced Sylveon, I'm like, oh, they're gonna put them all in. And I hope they, so. Like, I if they don't put all of them in, they'll leave out like two or three. Like, but right. four, four. Yeah, of them who's gonna want to play Jolteon when you have Pikachu? Uh, yeah, I don't what? know. Somebody, maybe there's a reason to play Jolteon. Someone called someone starting with J and ending with Ushiro. That's who. <laughs> I, I mean, not to mention, like, Flareon has a lot of people that enjoy it. I could see them leaving out Vaporeon. Uh, I could also <clears> see them leaving <throat> out Leafeon. They? I could see them leaving out Leafeon and Glaceon as well. But I, like... Uh, no, Leafeon coming. has to be there. Umbreon's coming. 100% Umbreon's coming. I don't, they I added... don't know. It's, too, it's very supportive. Have they added any new speedsters since launch, by the way? No. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, a, I don't think a, they've done a, that. A subject? Yeah, uh, we done that we did not discuss that yet. There's still like four speedster in the game, unfortunately. <laughs> still Gengar, still Lapso, um, Sarawara. I'm and, kind of okay oh, because those yeah. those are the ones that usually have problems, right? Like they're yeah. the ones that yes. like typically get out of balance very easily. Like I remember Gengar oh, yeah. very early on was out of balance, and then Town you, Flames or Aura has yeah. highlight for a moment. Yep. Uh, they, they both, like, Absol, maybe not so much, but, like, the, the others definitely had their moments where they're just like, yeah, we're kind of OP, and we gotta nerf you a little bit, maybe do some tweaks. Yep, 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 yep. and, uh, they're still great, yeah. so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, Lucario has, Lucario has received, like, 20 nerfs, he's still top of the chain, <laughs> of the I know, chain, I even know. though with a thousand nerfs. Uh, but, uh, it, the game is just, maybe I'll jump even back though... Oh, yeah, I would recommend it. And like I said, the whole meta changed. Now it's completely different. Yes. Now, um, so people are having a lot of fun with the intense change in meta since now Buddy Barrier and uh, Gold Shield are nerfed. Um, it's a lot more uh, a lot more crazy going on in there. It's, yes. I, I, I'm in love with the game. It's, it's definitely a win for me. I, with all MOBAs, I go through a cycle of, oh, I'm going to play this a lot for like a month, and then I get tired. And then I keep going, and then I stop. It's like, oh, I hit Masters. All right, I'm done. Right, right. I mean, it, it helps when you have like a full team of people oh, with you playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granted, I, I had a, I had a small group. Of That's why you just Puckle go to Puckle. Likes. That's why you go to Puckle. Yeah. Puckle. Puckle still has like a very dedicated like base. There's like four or five of them. Yeah. Yeah. There's like which is enough for a team. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. So you could definitely do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what? This is a good place to wrap it up. Let's wrap it up here. Uh, um, and we're going to kick it on over to the news. Let's cue that epic music. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, we've got a few things to talk about. First of all, if you're waiting for that uh, Pokemon anime based on Hisui, it's going to premiere on May 18th, and it's going to be a whole three episodes long. Woohoo! That is disappointingly short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I was really expecting, like, because they, like, hyped that up. They're like, yeah, we're going to do an anime on Hisui. And then they decided, like, no, 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 no. It's going to be three episodes. And that's not, I won't even call it an anime. That's like, oh, cool. You drew, like, almost a movie. Uh, <laughs> and, like, you just got, you wanted the premiere in three parts. All right. So. Yeah. Is it even Ash? Or is it Go? Is it any of them? Or is it, mm-hmm. like, a different anime? Uh no no it's like a different anime it's a completely different anime oh, okay gotcha yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, like a generations anime. type thing mm-hmm. yeah it's like generations okay yeah and of course uh, if you play Sword and Shield the global challenge for 2022 was announced or for spring was announced the format is still VGC and there is no Pokemon participation prize but you can get championship points. <laughs> Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> though they're kind of meaningless this year if you aren't attending any regionals or internationals. So that's nice. <laughs> signups run through May 5th and start immediately following signups. So that's uh, that's a lot of fun. Uh, that's uh, that's kind of dummy. Dumb. Dumb. Uh, yeah. But, but alright. Uh, go. Let's go to Unite News because there's nothing else to talk about really. Yo, there's yeah. a spring event that's running where you can earn a costume for Trevenant and Eldegoss. Weren't you an elder? Yeah, that's all that you gave like, me to say. I, I'm sorry. I just highlighted things willy nilly to this today. So it's okay. It's very cute. Um, you go every day and you water a a plant and it grow. It will grow okay. into this big cherry blossom. Uh, and you gain cherry blossoms as your currency, and then you use those currency to buy. And the feature things to buy are the Trevenant and Elder Gods costumes. Yep, both of them very adorable. Uh, uh so I haven't purchased it, any costumes, and me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> The same. I'm at, <laughs> like, like the costumes. I, I unfortunately, would buy. I can't say the same thing. Uh, there's a Green Ninja costume that came out. Uh, that is him with that big uh, samurai hat and a cape, and it has yeah, special I know. animation. I know what you're talking I about. Not. I could not stop my eyes. Well, so like, way so, too awesome. <laughs> so there's a ton of costumes that I would buy, but the problem is the ones that I would buy are the ones that are like locked behind like the gotcha lottery oh yeah no, like, no, no, yeah never pay 40 bucks for something there yeah, i'm just like sure. but I'm uh, just like i would just rather <laughs> just buy it from you and yeah. not have to roll for it every time i'll just give you money oh no you it's, don't have to roll anymore no are you sure like the like the snorlax citrus berry costume on oh, there's because there's certain of them they are it's like that's um, what i mean that's what i mean that's the old the older ones are now available you can just buy. oh are they Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Now there's stores you can just go in there and buy whatever you want. There's a couple of them mm-hmm. that they hide a bit behind the 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 daily um how you call it, the energy tank where you just pull things out of every day. Um. Yes. But most mm-hmm. everything uh it's available to just buy with in-game currency whenever you want. So I would rather do that. Not yeah. 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 I'd rather. But I'd rather that, do that that um that one is awesome. That event's awesome. Also running um it's the the first Saturday and Sunday of every month will now be Unite Day. Um, this will allow players to use any Pokemon for free and provide increased coins and energies for battle, which is amazing. They really are uh, uh, going all out on Unite, which I'm very happy with. Um, they're also, and this one has a caveat, they're, they're adding a monthly subscription that gives you 40 gems a day, special costumes, and a handful of other small things for $10. Um, seems fines for players who log in regularly and get the battle pass anyway, that is correct. It is not something meant to give you an edge. Uh, Unite has been actually pretty good at the pay-to-win thing that they, they're not. Well, right? they were very early on they were pay-to-win, but they like reverse course pretty quick. They reverse course really quick, and now everything is accessible without even having to pay a cent. So that's fantastic, good. unless you want good. the really good costumes and stuff like that. Yeah. All of that is uh, vis- visual only and won't alter gameplay at all. Um, but this monthly subscription was supposed to come out to, uh, on May 1st, uh, but it has been pushed uh, back. They uh, notify on their Twitter that they're pushing back, and there's no current data when this is going to be released. Interesting. Yep. And lastly, but certainly most hyped about it, is that there was a, since the biggest update came down, by the way, we haven't discussed about the update, but the update brought uh, nerfs, it brought... Uh, Power ups, there's like Trevin and it's incredibly good now. Uh, and while at the same time, uh, Hoopa has been completely nerfed, and all that is fine and dandy. But the most important thing is that with that update, was a data mined 
And it was discovered that the next two Pokemon that are coming to Unite are Delphox and Espeon. Espeon coming in May 16th, and Delphox coming sometime in June. Uh, and they're both attackers. Espeon looks perfect. She looks amazing. Uh, and uh, I just can't wait for Espeon to be released. Uh, I'm going to main her immediately, and only because there's no Jolte in the game. <laughs> All right. So uh, in the TCG, they also dropped the Pokemon Go set recently, which people were looking oh. forward to, which is interesting. I don't know. I like, I don't care. I'd have to care about Pokemon Go. So, <laughs> uh, uh, like, I still play it occasionally, but like, I, I don't know. I'm not the one of those people that's just like, yeah, Pokemon Go. I can't wait to read this Landorus or this Tapu Fidi. I was like, yeah, I'll open the app today and maybe walk around and catch a couple things. And, uh, but. The, the set came out. It includes Mewtwo V-Star, Melmetal V, Max, Gigantamax, and Radiant New Ace Specs, uh, which are Radiant cards, which are new Ace Specs, but in the form of shiny Pokemon. Uh, but they, they have nice. versions of Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, and Eevee, uh, which is only available, I believe, in one of the promotional products, like one of the boxes. Promotional. I, yeah, I actually since, saw... Since we talked about... A really oh, good. Oh, I I just wanted to add a quick comment. I saw a really good tweet the other day from uh, Glitch City that showed a picture of like a Target with all of the Pokemon product actually stocked, and it was <laughs> tagged with uh, "Oh, the world is healing," and I thought that was pretty good and pretty funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the world is healing. Maybe we can buy Pokemon product once again. I imagine this Pokemon Ghost that was like overprinted to hell and back. But that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, now you can go, Claude. I'm sorry, I cut oh. you off. I know. Well, you were mentioning Pokemon Go trading cards, so I figured we'd jump right into the Pokemon Go news. Absolutely. With with the uh, Mail Research Breakthrough being Alolan Grimer and Tapu Fini. Uh, sorry, we'll, we'll be Alolan Grimer. Tapu Fini will be entering raids May 10th. Exciting. With all of the Tapus being in raids from the 25th onward. Even better. At May 21st, Alolan Geodude will be the community day. You know, from 11 to 2, I think. That's a little time. disappointing. That's a little disappointing. I yeah, Alolan Geodude's kind of meh. Like, I like a lot... So, I like a lot of Alolan Pokemon. I learned this about myself last week. And... But, like, I don't know. If you're gonna Took make... Took you a bit to find that out. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Took I... Took well, you a bit to find I that like, out. <laughs> I like a lot of the Alolan Pokemon. Uh, like, the Alolan Forms. I... there, There's, like, two things I like, Jushir. It's a It's Alolan Forms. And if a Pokemon got an evolution in Gen 4. Those, those are like, it, if one of those two things is true, I probably like it. And okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, the, the update, there's been an update to all the Megas. Uh, so once you, me yes. uh, yeah, once you have Mega Evolved once, you'll be able to Mega with a cooldown timer instead of with more candies with that Pokemon. Yes. And the timer will decrease the more, as you Mega Evolve more and more. Uh, mega Raids have also gotten a lot easier to beat. Yay! Yeah, because that was a big problem. Like, Mega Raids were dumb, and Mega Energy is dumb, and they got rid of both of those things. So, uh, that's really nice. I appreciate them for doing something good. But, uh, take us home, Jushiro. Take us home. Now, first, in more Go news, from May 3rd to 8th, the Pokemon Air Adventure Global Event, which is a mouthful, Four will be live, putting La Mega Latias and Latios in raids, and Noibat will be seven um, kilometers egg with half egg distance during this event. Oh, that's actually exciting. That's actually kind of exciting. Good for Go them. Fest, which is in June 4th to 5th, will feature Tropius, Torkoal, Axew, Pancham, and Galarian Mr. Mime, and some of the rare Pokemon that span during the event. Shinies added, Shroomish, Normal, Carablast, Shellmet, and Axio. Um, the unknown letters are G-O-U-B, uh, and uh, we wonder if that is the theme for the next season. Yeah, Ultra Beast. Beast. Ultra Beast. Oh, UB, really? Ultra Beast. Yeah, it, that's what we're thinking. I mean, last year what they did is they did like a bunch of cool... Go Ultra Beast. Oh, that's Go yeah. Ultra Beast. They said there's going to be a secret at the end, so I assume there's going to be like, pro like a Nihilego or something. In it, you that know. was the first one. So yeah, that's what I imagine. Like I imagine, like Nihilego gets announced or something, or it comes at the end of the event. All right, so we end this now. We've been doing this uh, Puckles Pokey prediction because everybody likes three Ps, um, and 
we're going to go ahead uh, and do it. Our question we have this week is, will Scarlet and Violet box legends be quadruped? Uh, current mm. box art legends include Dialga, Xerneas, Sogaleo, uh, Zashin, Zamazenta, and technically Origin Palkia. <laughs> Um, the origin form of Palkia, but it's, uh, yeah, will, will they be quadruped? Actually, we've had at least one quadruped for gen forever, I guess, except with the exception no. of gen five, but. And one. No, no. Well, okay. But gen one didn't have box legends either. Okay. Uh, All yeah. right. So, uh, so gen two didn't have. No, no. I meant, I meant, in recent, I meant like in recent, in recent. Since history. Suicune. Okay, I'm just going to have to go through the list yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyogre and Groudon are not quadrupeds. Uh, that is true. Neither was Rayquaza. Uh, that's true. Um, it is a sky dragon. Gen 4, you had uh, Origin Palkia, I guess Origin Palkia and Dialga. And Giratina's, I guess Giratina could be. But the box art was Origin form, which didn't have legs. No, that is that is also true. It was not included, though. It, like, Dialga, Xerneas, like, Gen 5 didn't have it because we got the really interesting concept of, like, Here's two dragons that used to be one dragon, right? Which yeah, is and then the Gen 6, concept. Xerneas, and... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Seven, Sogaleo. Sogaleo. And then you've got... Uh, eight, the, eight the dogs. Yep. Or the wolves, or whatever you want to call them. I, I don't know. I It depends. I don't know what they're going to do for Scarlet and Violet. It really... I'm going to call it now that both of them are not going to be quadrupeds. I could see it being like a Unova situation, right? Like, because the Scarlet and Violet really makes me think, especially the fact that we're going back to colors, mm -hmm. that we're not going to yeah. get something like that. I, I think they're both going to be like some obscure, like, dragon. That's just mm. going to be nuts. We haven't seen... Well, we we haven't, also... in, any game, in any Pokemon game that's named after a color... We haven't had a quadruped legendary. On the <laughs> right, but that, we also that, have to consider that, that, that it's. Um, we also have to consider the region, right? It's a, it's, a, it's set in Spain, so um, usually there's some type of related aspect to the region. Yeah, um, I, I don't. Spain, I don't know that like UK is just like dogs, but like yeah, okay, keep going. <laughs> Well, Oof. wolves, right? It's. Wolves. I also don't think. And, uh, I also don't think like Hawaii is like Sun Lion and and Moon Bat, but that's that's. You wait, wait. You don't think of Moon Bat when you hear Hawaii? No, I don't. <laughs> that is not the first thing that comes to mind. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> um. Right, right. But th th those are based on you know Pokemon Sun, Pokemon Moon. So th in that aspect, that's um, that's the road they. They took. Yeah, yeah. So maybe um, we get uh, like, a, Spain, like a, I mean, a Scarlet and a Violet Pokemon. I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, I, I think, <laughs> I think maybe we're gonna get a a boar type of legendary, maybe because it's Spain and uh, they, you know, one of their everybody uh, wants bull stuff. But the problem is, what you're missing. Yeah, what you're I missing know. from the bull is just Tauros. Just do Tauros. We'll all yeah, be happy. I'm calling a regional form of Tauros. Yep, a regional form of yep. Tauros. That is all. Or Buffalant. Uh, no, Tauros. It better be Tauros. If it is not Tauros, so help me God. It it has to Can be Tauros. Can you imagine? I can. Well, if Blossom didn't appear in Alola, and Greninja didn't appear in Hisui, who are we to say <laughs> that they're gonna, that yeah. Tauros is gonna appear in, in Scarlet and Violet? So, let's see. Alright, alright. But that's good enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I guess people could email us that question, too, uh, in the mailbag as well, but we're going to go... just spam Thatch in general. Uh, which people do. Uh, <laughs> the thing that used to be bad was sometimes people would... Uh, well, you know what? We won't talk about it here. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll we'll end the... Uh, We'll, we'll end this part right here, and we're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz. Hello, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Professor Snag with the rules. The co-hosts are working together as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that you, the listeners, have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The hosts can use a free hint at any time. 
If they get all the answers correct without using the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And welcome to the trivia. Thank you for that introduction. Our first question this week is going to come to you guys from... Bam! The flying type has been paired with every other type in Pokemon, but there is one type that has only been paired with one Pokemon slash Pokemon line. Which type is it? With itself. All right, all right, all right. I, I, I need clarification uh, on this question because yes. I'm confused. Okay. Uh, so flying type, there are dual type Pokemon, right? That exists. Yes. Right. Dual type Pokemon. Flying has been paired with every other type. Okay. However, there is one one unique combination of dual typing that includes flying. And what line is that that has that unique typing? So it's a dual type and it's flying with something else and it's only that one specific one. That yes. Hmm. All right. So let me go that through one specific line. Let me go through all of the Pokémon in my head. How um, many flying grounds do we have other than Gliscor and its evolution? Oh, one of the one of uh, I assume one of the um the genies, right? Yes, one of the genies has it. So I, I'm okay. let, let, let me start with Gen One because you have Fire, which also which has Charizard and Moltres. You have Bug, which right. you know there's plenty of bugs. It's not normal. All right. Poison is Zubat, Golbat, Crobat. Is there any other poison flying? Oh yeah, of course. Is there? I think so. I mean, poison flying seems like a very normal, like a very common. Yeah, type. but besides Zubat. Is there anything else? Um, hmm. I know there's water. I know there's rock. All right. Um, who's the rock? I was thinking of who's the rock. Aerodactyl and the other fossil from Jin. Ah, that's Six, correct. Yeah. Well, or five I or something. forgot about the, the, the fossils. Gotcha, Shiro. Um, ooh, then you might be onto something, is, actually. It might be. Is, I, is there another ice besides Articuno? Um, another ice other than Articuno. Ice flying. I want to say... Kelber, Kelber, Kelber. Yeah. Is it really poison? Like, because I'm thinking, like, and everything else I know there's multiple of. Right. It could be... I mean, there's Dark Flying, Evaltal... Yeah, you have plenty uh, of Dark Flying, you have plenty of Rocks, Waters, Electrics, Psychics. Right. I'm going to need an answer here. here. I think it's yeah, poison. I, mean, I, I think it is poison. That's surprising. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. Poison is correct. The only line is the Zubat nice. line. Uh, the, in Ice, Ice is, uh, has two. There's a lot with just two lines. Ice right. has Delibird and Articuno. Ground has Gliscor and Landorus. Ghost has Drifloon and Oricorio Sensu form. Yes, uh, it does. Fairy didn't have it until recently with uh, Togekiss and Enamorous. Oh, and I totally forgot about Enamorous. Uh, and then you've got Fighting, which also didn't have one until recently. Uh, Halucha and Zapdos. Halucha and Zapdos. Yeah. Everybody else has at least more, has way more. Huh. Yeah. Nifty. So, yeah, yeah. Zubat. Nobody ever made a new poison flying type. Just Zubat. Nobody else. Interesting. So that's interesting. Yeah, the, I know there's two lines of mono flying now. You have the Tornadus and then the, was it Rookity? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you even have two lines of just pure flying types, right? Like, it is mm, insane. Yeah. All right. So you guys are one for one. Your next question is going to come from, I'm going to say this name, and it's going to be very long. This is from J Paragraph Breaks McLovin. In the original Kanto Pokedex, rock slash ground is a common type combination. Actually, we're not going to do this one. Uh, because it's pedantic and I don't like it. I don't like it where they... Is the, the answer six? No, the question is about... Huh. You have rock ground types, but what's the only one that's a ground rock type? That's the question, essentially. Um, and I, don't oh. like, I don't like questions like that. Um, because, Onyx. Uh, no, the answer is Rhyhorn. But oh, of it, course. Does, it doesn't Rhyhorn. matter. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, all right. This next one is from Zachary, though. That's Gen two for two, huh? That's the next one. You no. Know, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this one, this one is from Zachary. In Gens two and three, Sneasel had a signature move. What is it? I feel like I should know this, and I feel it. Yeah. The, um. The snow did it one. get knockoff? <laughs> no, no, it definitely didn't. Because it. Um... No, I think it was uh, one of the ice ones. If I'm not mistaken, I could be completely wrong. So, but I think ice. Gen two Sneasel. Gen three, he said. 
Oh, it was right? two and three. It was two and three? In two and three, he was Sneasel was the only Pokemon that knew this move, yes. That is essentially the question. Oh, gosh. Oh, 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 uh, beat up. Oh, beat up. I'm almost positive it's beat up. Yeah, actually. Yep, 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 yep. I'm with you. Is beat up the right. final answer? Yeah. Yes. That, that is correct. Answer. That is correct. A beat up was exclusive to the Sneasel line until Generation 4, where for some reason they decided, you know what? Houndour and Houndoom should get it too. And they gave it to for whatever Houndour and reason. For whatever reason, the move that was coming up in my mind was the priority ice move. Oh, Ice Shard, ice shard didn't that, exist that. until Gen 4. Right, right. So, my bad. All right. So, your next question is your Pokedex question, as always. This one is going to come to you from Tre Trev the No Ho Ho's. <laughs> uh, it's Evolving Skies Pokemon card entry reads. I didn't oh, read this no. beforehand. I apologize. Its thick okay. claws are its greatest weapons. They're mighty enough to crack Rhyperior's carapace. Carapace. Carapace? Is that how you say the word? Mm -hmm. um, it's claws, and it fights with Rhyperior's. Yep. So uh, this is also the same as its Pokemon Shield entry. So. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad that it could be something that I have an idea about. What is claws? Everything, almost everything has claws, but uh, if we're gonna nail it down to things that might fight against a ride on, I would say I'm uh, talking about them, Sneasel and we uh, Weevil. No, they wouldn't um, put two of those in the, immediately there. I got yeah. no idea. Can I get, can who, we get a second entry? A, Just make a yeah. guess and then I'll give you the second entry. Yeah, all right, go to Jero, whatever you want. Uh, I was gonna say, um, and I forgot what I was gonna say, so it's fine. Uh, ooh, what would I'm just trying to think. Just what. give me a Pokemon's name, like any Pokemon. That any Pokemon? Be, yeah, probably one that's in Pokemon Shield, Sword and Shield. Like I would, I would pick one of those specifically. But like, <laughs> uh, just to like increase your chances, nail it down from one in nine hundred to like one in seven. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with Sixagoon just because. It is not Zigzag Dude. Uh, all right. Moving on. Your hint <laughs> entry is going to be from Pokemon Sword, and it reads, This highly territorial Pokemon prefers dry climates. It won't come out of its boulder on rainy days. Frustle. Frustle, yeah. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the only thing I know that like lives inside of a boulder. Crustle yeah, yeah, is yeah. correct. Uh, Crustle is the Woo! Pokemon here. Uh, so there you go. Oh, yeah, he got boosted in Unite, so those Crustle fans, <laughs> you can use them now. Your next entry, uh, your next question, I should say, um, is your multiple answer question, where you can give me, uh, you can gain multiple points, up to three here in this case. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take this question from the Swampiest Swampert. There are four answers here, but I only need three, one point for each. If you want to get all four, you can okay. go ahead and do that. That's fine with me. What four evolutionary stones can be used to evolve a grass-type Pokemon? Okay, so you have Leaf Stone, which, mm -hmm. you know, Vileplume or Victory, as, I mean, let's just say one Vileplume. You have Water Stone for Ludicolo. You have mm -hmm. a Sun Stone for Lilligant into, or into a Pelt Petal to Lilligant, and then... I mean, that's three mm, points. I know, but I'm yeah. trying to think of the last one. we're gonna one. try to nail the night one. You have Mega Stone... To go no, to Mega no, Obama Snow. No, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. You're gonna kick oh, yourself. Oh. You're gonna kick yourself. I I know. No, um, no, 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 um, no, wait, no, don't do it's it. It's not fire. Yet. I don't. I don't know of any fire stones. I don't. I don't think it's. That's it's for jalapeno. Oh, yeah, yeah, jalapeno. The moon, 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 moonstone. No. Moonstone. Does moonstone evolve any grass types? Um, no, right? Maybe, maybe. maybe? I, I, um, I'm maybe. trying to. I don't, is there the? It's not the icy stone. What about the dusk stone? Does it? Oh, Ooh. I feel the dusk stone does evolve. Something dusk into. stone could be something. Yeah. Oh, a grass type into something. I just can't remember which one. I don't think it's thunderstone either. He has a berry in his hand. I know. For those who into the podcast. So, oh, oh, um, uh, it, it, uh, 
A dawn stone. No, that's not correct. Stone? Okay, we're gonna move on, guys. Oh you've no, named, it's shiny stone. It's you've named, oh you've named God. literally I look at every Chad, stone. I see Roselia and I'm, or Rosaria, and I'm like, you've named every single stone but the <laughs> but the shiny stone. <laughs> Uh, I already so, got three. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you got okay. the three. It's the shiny stone to get Rosalia to Rose or Roserade. So there you guys okay. go. God. <laughs> no, I oh. see. Sigma came in with the help. Yep. I think you Sigma. guys, you guys are six for four, or whatever the points are now. Their last question is your poke or your uh, base stat question, as always. And this one's gonna come from Shining Mew. What fairy type Pokemon has the highest special defense of all fairy type Pokemon? Special defense? Uh, yes. Special defense. I know this one very, very well. So. I feel like I know it. And then part of me is like, wait, is it the new Enamorous? But then part is of me is like, Ooh. I mean, is it a legend? Oh. oh, gosh. Oh, let me think of fairies. Fairies, fairies, fairies. fairies. Um. Uh, help me out here. Um. Fairy the fact that Thatch knows it really well means it tells me it's not the new enamorous like tank form. <laughs> you don't know that. I look at stats all the time and I memorize them. How do you think I do that? Nah, nah, that's fine. What else is I'm insulted. Big I'm insulted that you think that. Hi, well, ah, yes. Okay. The fact that Thatch did the robot on stream that <laughs> tells me that. It's obviously a fairy type. <laughs> it, is, it is a fairy type. I will, I will tell you that. You do have the hint you can use, too, or you can try to go for all eight. Do we try to go for no, all eight? No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. I have to just go through my list. Um, I got it. Florges. The big, bulky uh, 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 flower. I'm That's almost positive. I mean, I, I'm sorry. not. Yeah, I do not know much about fairy Pokemon. So, is that your final answer? That is my final answer. All right, Florges is correct. Ooh, Florges, Claude uh, MVP. Florges has a base stat, a special defense base stat of 154. Uh, second place is a tie between Carbink and Deonce at 150. Holy crap! With those, wow. Huh? Wow, I totally forgot about Carbink and Diancy. You forgot they were Pokemon. Yeah, I understand. And, yeah, he's one. Uh, all, Mega Gardevoir follows that up with 130, and then Enamorous Therian only has 100. So. Only 100? Wow. Yeah, I told you I know what a shame. Enamorous Therian. Gosh. Getting, getting slight <laughs> uh, over here. Okay, so we're going to give you guys some points. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add those in. That's actually, oh man, the uh, the ladder is very interesting right now. Ooh. So we're going to go Ooh. ahead. In first place, we have Seth Vilo with 16 points. In second place, we have Jushiro with 15 Ooh. points. Ooh. Tied for 15. You're halfway there. Uh, in third place, ah. we've got a tie between Whimsicott and Claude 9 with 8 points. And in fifth, we've got our Sigma with 7. Vilo, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, boy. All right. So until next time, if you want to catch us, catch the next episode of the podcast and you can see who's going to win and get more trivia questions. So we will kick it on over to the topic. Hey, would you like a green Taurus badge? Well, you can have one. If you come over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash puckle podcast, we are going to be giving them out once we hit $850. We're going to be giving those to every patron at the $10 plus tier because uh, we love you guys. We'd love to see this project project made. Of course, if we hit any other thresholds on the way there, such as $800 for the week-long giveaways to the community, that would also happen as well. So if you'd be interested in getting a green Taurus badge, be f feel free. Come on over. Uh, if you can't support the show, don't worry about it. You just listening is enough for us. So until then, though, guys, I'm Thatch, and I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be gym leaders. What do we think they should be? Uh, because I really actually like this question for a lot of reasons. One, because I think Sword and Shield did a really awesome job of giving gym leaders a realistic role in their universe, and people mm -hmm. can understand it then. Uh, but it is different than the roles we've seen before. Like, specifically, like the one that juxtaposes for me is Gen 5, uh, right. where, where it's a lot different in that sense. But I, I really, really enjoyed Sword and Shields. But I thought it'd be interesting to have a discussion for what we think they should be. 
And because I, while I like Sword and Shield's portrayal, because it's consistent, I guess, is my word, um, and also gives a reason that many of the other games do not give, I, I would really like to see if there's a different there's a different thing we can get to. So like in Sword and Shield, they are like professional sports players and the gym has to like qualify each year to get into the gym circuit, essentially. You know, right. like the top eight gyms get to yeah. be there because there are like minor league gyms, essentially, that will one day become big boy gyms. Right. Uh, which I, I really wish they did that with like DLC where like the gyms right. you could face would switch. Right. Well, they kind of did... They kind of did a little bit, uh, and yeah. they they did it they did it very slightly, and I think they did it poorly, right? I would love to see this like more fleshed out, where maybe you bump into a minor league gym or something, exactly like that. Right. Because we hear mm-hmm. about these minor league gyms, but then we've got uh, we've got oh my gosh, where's Pierre at? Um, uh, or not Pierre? Seventh gym. Uh, the seventh gym. Where's that at? What's Spike, the name? Spikemuth. Spike Spikemuth. Spike that's it. That's it. Spikemuth. Yeah. You've got Spike Myth, which is just like, yeah, we're this ragtag group of people who don't even Dynamax. And, mm-hmm. and it's just like, mm, and you made it in over, like, you know, the rock type gym that's led by Gordy, <laughs> you know, if you're playing with one shield. Talk about talk about uh, always the, uh, the, the ones that we kick aside are always the ones right at the end. Uh, now we have to admire them for not going. <laughs> right? <laughs> they were right all along. All along. Yeah, I don't well, know. I, was... I, I like how they had the whole like it's you're competing for the yes. opportunity to be there. Yes, like no, right. I'm gonna go back to like Alola though, and I liked the trial captains. No, no, I I, they... I I personally I like it more as the idea of it being a community leader of some sort. Yes, uh, I which is, agree. I I like the idea of it being a community leader, which the trial captains weren't really. It was more of like. I don't know. The problem I had with the trial captains was it felt too much like Boy Scouts. You know what I okay, mean? Yeah. Where where it was just like, oh yes, this child is in charge of this trial because that's their job to get their special badge to like approval to be a big Pokemon trainer one day. I mean, it always has been that way if you consider that the the the, the reward has always been badges. Yeah. No. No. I I I I think trials were an interesting concept. I just think in terms of the the question isn't whether or not I think it's interesting. The question is is whether or not what I, role I, should they what take? what I think they should be doing, right? Like I right. if if Thatch or Jushiro or Claude were to make a Pokemon game, right? Mm-hmm. What role would we want that Pokemon gym leader slash trial captain slash whatever to play? So mm-hmm. I, I think in I think in my mind, and I've seen this a lot in a lot of fan games where the gym leaders are involved with the storyline that you're going through. Oh, absolutely! And, like that, I would like, love. They have like there is there is something going on with like the evil team attacking this town, and you have to help the gym leader to do something or like solve this puzzle. Yes. To then I... you know clear the issue, and then you can battle. And I, I love how like, and that's happened through like many different Pokemon games. I think it happened in uh. Well, black, black and, white, and white. Black and white. I think I think black and white is probably the closest to what my ideal vision would be. In that they are definitely right. community leaders that are going to try to defend their like where they live. And which I, I don't think you see in Pokemon Sword and Shield, like I even mean, their sports team captain, uh, with the exception of Leon, who's like, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. a superhero, but you can't play either uh, because I'm going to be right. the superhero, even though you're the main character. I don't know. Sword and Shield, like the biggest issue I had with that in the entire time was like story just happens around you. Yeah. But, like, I mean, I, if, I if you look at I'm going to go back to black and white, too, because I, I love this concept where the first gym with Sharon is specifically like this is basically yeah. a trainer school. No, no, no. And, I, I love it because I yeah. they even have that conversation where he Sharon talks to like Lenora uh-huh. and she she's just like, yeah, what's it like not fighting with like your aces, you know? And he's just like, yeah, it's definitely a lot different. And I love that. I love that yeah. conversation. Where it, there's definitely like an intention behind the gyms to try to teach people how to po- like be Pokemon trainers. I really yeah, love that. It, right. And, it's and they're being community I've... leaders as well at the same time. Like it's great. Could, and like they, they put the, it shows it there because it's like, oh, you're not playing with your aces. And I yes. truly think that, you know, the ideal Pokemon game, like you could do like any of the gyms in any order. Yes. But yes, I agree. So they would scale with the number of badges that you have. 
Yeah. Which is which is what I'm hoping they do in Scarlet and Violet with their their quote unquote right. open world, right? Because uh, I don't yeah. want to get into people complaining that oh, it's not really open world. Uh, which then is just like, well, I think you're uninformed because you think Breath of the Wild is the definition of open world. But okay, it's fine. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not getting into that bag of worms. But I like the idea that things scale with, you know. You're fighting no, no, someone for I the like... first time, you're going to use easier Pokemon versus, you know, someone yeah. who's, you know, collected seven badges. So there was a, right. uh, there was a really interesting, well, not interesting, but there was a fanfic that I read a really long mm -hmm. time ago. This was, this would have been like, you know, 10 years ago or something like that now. I can't find it anymore. Mm -hmm. Where there was a, uh, it was a trainer and it was more of like a grittier Pokemon story of like going through Kanto. Um, they always it was, are. It was a trainer going through Kanto, and then they were gonna go. They they got to the point. They rode up to the point where they like they fight Brock, and uh, the whole thing's really intense because the whole journey is like, oh, I can die at any moment. Like Pokemon can kill me, and which was which was kind of fun to read. But then he catches the trainer catches enough Pokemon, and he goes to Brock's gym, and because he has only he has zero badges, and this is his first time. Like Brock goes, okay, and he only picks like a couple of Pokeballs out. They also kind of do the same thing in the Pokemon Origins anime. Um, if anybody's ever noticed that, because like um, right before Red fights Brock in the Origins an the Pokemon Origins anime that we got back in 2013, Brock's like, oh, you've got what zero badges, and then he like goes over to a, like a row of six Pokeballs and only pulls out two. Right. Uh, like they really... modify depending on how many yes. badges do your opponent have. Exactly. Like, and I think it's important for the gym leaders, no matter like at least as far as their role, is to help, you know, the player and the trainer like get better row and become, you know, a better Pokemon battler. I, I think the whole stigma behind, oh, if you do any of the gyms, you have to start going towards the league and whatnot, is just like no, I feel like that's forced. I, I feel like it should be more than that. It's a chance to grow and get better I, and learn. I think I would One like to see I would like to see the games uh, hit on that a little bit more, Claude. Just because, I would love right. to see even the anime do that, where it's like, you know... Well, the anime, if... anime kind of did, like, OG anime, right? Like, let's think about... So, we were talking about, like, the gym leaders have you do something to solve some puzzle or something like that, like Clay did in, in Gen 5. And I think they kind of did that in the Pokemon anime, like, in Gen 1. Because a lot of those, like... Like, let's think about the Blaine battle, right? Ash has to do a ton of stuff with Blaine oh, yeah. before Blaine agrees to, to like, even do the right. battle. And I think that's a very interesting concept uh, to do and something that they could just keep doing more and more. I would love for your time at the gym to be more than, oh, I beat these trainers in this dungeon uh, to get to the boss. In my mind, I'm like, I would love to see, like, you know, if we take Go in the most recent anime, be like, you know, I'm going to take on this gym battle. Yeah. And, and then, like they just, he just does it, gets one badge, and that's it. Like you don't oh, need yeah. to do all the badges or something like that, or like you know, do it as a way to grow and get better. No, no I would love just right. to have the opportunity in the game where when you go to the gym, you have to spend your time at the gym to train to get better a little bit before right. you can even take on the gym leader. And maybe I, the problem with this is like it's Pokemon, and if they do this, they're just gonna give me like eight different Pokemon trainer schools from. Yeah. Uh, sun and moon and i'm gonna hate it but, that I, useful, I, but yes. yeah yes uh and so i just want i want that i want something like that and honestly it's not my job to know what that is but no i i wouldn't i mean you can hire me as a consultant pokemon i will be there in a heartbeat mm -hmm. uh but it it's like one of those things where i would i like i would just love to spend more time with the gym leader one to get some like character development out of the gym leader right uh, which I think we actually got did a decent job with in in uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like, we did an okay job yes. with that. Um, the only thing is, like, a lot of the lore came from, like, lore dumps from their cards. And yeah. mm -hmm. I'm very much so, like, from playing as much D&D &D as I have been playing uh, and, like, looking into storytelling and everything like that, I really appreciate show, don't tell, right? Right. Uh, I So I really hate exposition dumps like that. I would much rather like see this person do something so that I know their character more than to be like, ah, yes, Gordy is the son of Melanie because the trainer card said so. Like, just show yeah, me right. Gordy and like call her mom, and then we're done. Like, <laughs> or some yeah, I, I, like, that's I all I understand. want. That's all I want. Like, I want stuff like that. But like, even then, it would be really cool. 
for like Kabu to be like, okay, you can take on my gym, but first you have to go to this place and clear out this area of Pokemon. And, and then he like, like prove to, yourself worthy, like prove yourself. And he'll, he like give, he, he's just like, uh, maybe he comes in and like swoops in and helps you because you run into the evil team, which there wasn't really one present in Sword and Shield, which is another minor problem I have with the story. But that's I agree because there's very little conflict right. throughout the whole thing. There's just people right. like until all the people. Giga, uh, yeah. Go there's crazy. just a lot of people. There's just a lot of people doing things around oh. you, and you don't affect their lives except for that time you put Hop into a minor depression. And oh, gosh. right, yeah, yeah. It, it, it that's all there is. And I, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's my biggest complaint about Sword and Shield. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I had, I had very similar complaints to Pokemon X and Y, uh, but X and Y, in my opinion, in terms of just like region was a lot more fun to go yeah. walk through. Like the roots were more but interesting. Has, to me, it had less story. I, I, except for the long drought between uh, Gym I 2 don't... and Gym 3. Uh, no, you mean Gym 1 and Gym 2. That's it. Gem one and Gem two were like, yeah, very long. Um, I don't know. It was, it was still interesting because it's a lot to go through and it's a lot of Pokemon to catch. I don't know. It, it, that's it. We're off. We're off topic there. But yeah. Uh, but too- anyways, go, going back to gym layers. Um, yeah, I, I like. Yeah. And if we even want to expand, like, I like how like if they are like pillars of the community, then you have elite four members, which in my mind is just like a step up from that. Right. So, like, if you have, if, like, the gym leaders are, like, let's say, like, you know, the heads of each community or something like that, you have the gym leaders as the, uh, I'm trying to think of a proper way to put it. I don't know. Leaders the of one, community, uh... I almost want to say, like, they're the best of the community, almost. Or something like that. Or, like, you know, like, yeah. they take on much more responsibility with, like, you know, communicating with other regions and the help maintaining the peace over everyone. They're just government than, officials yes. now. They're government officials. Yeah, government yeah. officials. Pretty well, I mean, which, to be fair, which is, that, is, that was the original concept for gym leaders, though, uh, was that they were more akin to, like, the Japanese shogun. Mm-hmm. Um, in Gen 1, that is. They, and so, like, they were meant to be, like, the governors of, like, the town or the mayors of the yeah. town. Whatever, whatever um, type of uh, you know um, organization gym leaders run, right? Because it, it, like we've been saying, it depends on the gym. They've been treating it differently. Sometimes they're Boy Scouts, sometimes they're sports, sometimes they're government or officials. Yeah, I know. whatever yeah. it is, it's not consistent. You sure? So, What's going on? Where's the gym leader right. union when you need it? <laughs> but uh, what I would like to see, though, is whatever they choose for the next one or whatever they do. One of my I wish to see if we we're going to see like a more fleshed out story is to hear about a corruption inside that oh. organization. Okay, yeah. so they did, the, they did that in the manga, though. They did that in the manga. Yeah, but right. like, how fun would that be, though, in, in like a it game where great. it's like, I would love it. You fight one of the gym leaders early on, you find out later on they were actually like, you know, let's say it's the second or yeah. third gym leader. Yep. Yep. They're, they're corrupt and they come back stronger, and you have to fight them as the head of the evil team or something like that later on. I think that would be a great spin. Not- or the evil team is knocking down the gym leaders and taking over the gyms, and you have to oh, stop the oh, gym they be, leaders. So they become they they become the new gym leader because they beat the old gym leader so bad. Yeah, oh, and then the old, cool. and they did it not because of meritocracy, of course, but because of they have more resources because they've been cheating because they. I'm into this. Uh, have, it's never gonna happen, uh, but I'm into. It. I, I, right. I really like that idea where it's like the, the entire region is all the evil like gym leaders. You fight through all the evil people, and then, like, post-game, all the regular gym leaders show up that you get to battle. Yeah. yeah. And they take over their gyms again, uh, and become, once again, the gym leaders. Or new gym leaders come out and beat the, the corrupt gym leaders, and then, you you know, you cleanse the, the region out of corruption that they were uh, taking over. And yeah, yeah. that would be very fun. That's great. Because we got to play around with this whole meritocracy thing. And they did so in Gen 1 with Giovanni, where Giovanni was the most powerful uh, gym leader of them all, but he was also the most corrupt and he had the resources to be the most powerful of them all, mm-hmm. uh, whilst others are didn't have the resources that Giovanni had. So play around with that, and I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And it could be a lot of uh, 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 openness for more storytelling. So, uh, it, it, so, it, it, so Liger in the chat, we went on this whole tirade. So Liger in the chat goes, uh, 
or you fight the evil team and then you find out that the final gym leader is the evil team leader and uh <laughs> which is just the plot of pokemon red and blue but uh, much. uh i would i would still love to see it more like it was in the manga like we could i in the manga i think it was more interesting than just like giovanni's the final gym leader which was a cool twist right. as a kid yeah but uh, I, I in the manga what they did was also Lieutenant Surge, Sabrina, and uh, and Koga I believe I might be wrong. Um, there was a third one I forget who it was. Uh, was all they were all actually members of Team Rocket as well. Mm hmm. And uh, Blaine technically was, but he like defected because of Mewtwo. So, yeah, because of Mewtwo. Like he he helped create Mewtwo for Team Rocket, but then defected because of Mewtwo. So yeah. it was, uh, it, the manga is just so good. Everybody should go read the manga and, uh, yeah. um, and you get to, but like the whole point was like, it was a more intense fight then because they didn't, he didn't, uh, red didn't realize like these guys were in team rocket right away, but then they ended up being in team rocket, which I think is really cool just to show like, Hey, the, the depths of the roots of this organization go far deeper. Right. And I'm not saying okay. every gym leader needs to be in it because then you can have like an epic, mm. like gym leader versus gym leader fight. Right. right at the end just like they do in the manga so i i think so, that's something that you could absolutely do and have a lot of fun with the other thing that i would love to see is them taking a step back from all the like gym leaders are based around a type and i would love to see it more based off of like let's say an archetype type of thing where it's like all right you just like it's you know all right, you fight, let's say, the forest gym leader, where they have a bunch of grass, bugs, and poisons, where it's just more I, than just... I agree with you, hardcore. ...one type itself. I the, the problem is, I really feel like Scarlet and Violet is going to harp on just, like, types in general. Uh, so do and, I. And I think... I even think it's to the point where they might actually have, like, a full 18 gyms or something stupid. Mm. But, like, I think... I think Not the enough type... teams to make, a, like, a team leader you gym leader. You could do it. You could do it. I out, just... I amount, definitely... Yeah. I definitely see it becoming a thing in uh, in Scarlet and Violet, though, where, like, types are going to be uber important. So, unfortunately, we're not going to get gym leaders who are, like, I specialize in multiple types, uh, which is something right. that I think the series needs. Yeah, I think multiple uh, types. One thing that I, really, cool that I really, really like was in Sword and Shield, uh, I think, isn't the last yes, gym yes, leader. Yes, it's a weather, Raihan, yes. It's not a dragon, right? Uh, everyone thought, who's well, the dragon? He, said, he does say the he did, weather guy. Yeah, no, no, I love that, and that's what I want from yeah. more gyms. I want, I want more stuff like that in gyms, where you get more of a, like a cohesive like person than just I like I like go go, and right, uh, you get to go ahead and you you battle somebody who's like, yeah, I hung out in this area, and there's all of these wild Pokemon in this area, so I mastered all of these Pokemon. And so, so then, or, you know, I'm a trick room expert and, uh, you know, I'm going to, I don't even about strategy. I think it would teams. just be, I think, I think just being like location based, like Claude was saying, like the forest or something would be really interesting. I, I think yeah, that I, would be very interesting in that, in that. All right. Episode. So then I, I have to ask Then this is goes to Fats and Duchero. If you guys were gym leaders, what would your gimmick be? And what would be your little team? Ooh, okay. So question, we did this. We, so like way back in the day. Um, so like we have Puckle Summer League, right? And and in uh, Pokemon in in Puckle Summer League, it's just like a bunch of us doing gyms, uh, and we each choose a type. Blah 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 blah. Uh, one we did Fall League a couple years ago, which was really cool. And we doubled up the types. That was a lot of fun. But uh, what we did way back in the day, like I'm talking like 2010, maybe maybe wow. yeah, 2010. Uh, we we used to have like more than just like spring or f summer league. We also had like fall league and spring league and winter league, uh, which was a headache to keep up with, and that's why it doesn't happen anymore. And in uh, we did one fall league though, where we instead of doing types, we did like team themes, right? And okay. so what I did was I like built like a whole reptile team, and I think that would be really cool. Uh, like Ooh. reptiles in quotes, right? So like there, so it was mostly an excuse to use for alligator, but then you, <laughs> it was an excuse to use for alligator. And then you could like Torkoal was, I remember Torkoal was there and I forget who else, but there were, there were a few others like that. So I think that would be the kind of route I would go probably something more like, Hey, here's like a vague theme for my gym. And instead of just being one type, because just being a type gym leader sounds boring and right. 
you're you're not much of a challenge. Though if we do go back to like the whole conversation we're having about Sharon, where it's like, oh, this is intro to Pokemon, uh, you kind of need to have that simplicity of like a single type so you can learn how to beat it. But yeah. I I don't know. I I think it would be a lot oh. more fun to uh, to just like have a realish team to make it more of a challenge. Right. So if I were to be a Pokemon gym leader, I would love to be a fossil gym leader and be like an archaeologist. And when you enter my gym, it's kind of like Jurassic Park. Yeah. Find a, yeah. Dinosaurs I'm into this too. And, all. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, you, you will find me in the end researching some fossils and then you'll find my fossil Pokemon. Uh, all of them, I say like I would choose six different ones depending on who I were, how I would fight and stuff like that. I mean, I'm... Uh, as I grow older, I'm begin I'm becoming such a fan of the fossils that uh, I think it will be amazing. So you're just a rock type gym leader. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yes. I wish. I that that something uh, about well, that's I don't know if that's a real fossil. Rock. Okay, that's not a real fossil. Uh, okay, because I, I I thought about this at length, and because I like the idea of I, I love the idea of the battle pike from the Battle Frontier, where you know you would go through. And like, you know, and like either you'd pick different random paths and based on what path you picked, different things would happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, you know, sometimes it healed you. Sometimes it was a random trainer. Sometimes someone just came up and poisoned all of your Pokemon. That type of thing. And I like, mm -hmm. I like that idea, but like with like kind of like the Great Marsh from uh, Sinnoh as well, where it's like, all right, you have all these different paths and the more time you spend in the mud... The more, like, the higher your chance of like your Pokemon getting statused, and I like so that way, like, by the time you get to the gym leader, it's a lot more difficult. Mm. That and I, I, don't, I like the idea of once you enter the gym, you shouldn't be allowed to leave to go heal. It's a you're taking on the whole gym at once. Come prepared. I, or, I like that you know, puzzle don't. because it prevents that, right? Yeah, Wait, yeah. Well, that, that, that was the whole point of the battle plank, is you enter it, you have to go through yep. like seven different rooms to make it to the gym leader, and either you pick the right room, and you get to Man. go there and you don't face anyone, or it's, oh gosh, you now have to deal with all these other things to get to me first. But it's all like, you know, it, it, it's a puzzle. So, it, you know, it can reward people that know what they're doing, or, you know, it just doesn't. And I, I think I would definitely go like Swamp-esque. So I can have like you know all of my fun poison types that I love, but you know some ground and some water and grass types that are entertaining. Yeah, so I mean, I would really, really, really like. I don't know. I would just like something different. Just give me something <laughs> different. Uh, and honestly, like Legends Arceus was supposed to be our like hardcore game, and so I don't right. expect much out of Scarlet and Violet. But I would love to see something yeah. a little bit more malleable where i mean at least they're probably going to let us go do gyms in different orders but, but i but like I, if you look at the gym design from sword and shield i thought those were a lot better no, no i they loved were, chasing the wulu around no no they, like, they, they i, were I loved how they, in the kabu's gym you could fight and catch fire type pokemon i yeah. i like that a lot i want them to expand on it if that makes sense like i just mm -hmm. want them i want it to be expanded upon i I, I think we don't it's a good base ground for them to explore more with in the future. Yeah, maybe we don't have to do, like, the gym, everything in the gym, if that makes sense, right? I, I don't want it to always just be a, uh, what, what's it, I just don't want it to always be, like, a gym puzzle. I just want it to be a rite of passage to be able to fight the gym leader. Right. Right? I, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see it be a rite of passage. Like, the gym leader's like, we should do this together. Like, there were rumors very early on in the uh, release cycle for sword and shield of like the Wulu thing that we did in, in the grass gym in sword and shield. And the way I had imagined it was you were doing that out in the, out in like the city. And unfortunately that wasn't the case. It was like in the gym. Yeah. So literally all I'm asking for that is like, let's take that and like move it outside. Right. That, well, especially that's all if they have the whole wild area, be like, right. all right, I'm the, I lost something in the wild area. I can't battle you until you find it. Right. Well, okay. and now you have to just go find it. This just really solidifies my theory that Switch was a 3DS game, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, I just sure it was. Yeah, I think I think it was prepped as a 3DS game that got ported to the Switch. That's yeah. my that's my honest opinion of what Sword and Shield is, just based on how they mm -hmm. designed it. Just and just how based on how Nintendo operates. Yeah, I, I, I can totally see them 50% through Sword and Shield, and they're dropping like, yeah, the Switch is the new thing. Yeah. Uh, well, they also they admit they also admitted that they didn't think the switch was going to be that hot. 
Right, I remember that. Yeah. So and like, now oh, it's, let's see how it yeah. sold. How it sells. has it so when it sold, then that's when like yeah, we have to do. it. I think it's sure. outsold the Wii at this point. Yeah. I, I think it's oh a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it's, I'm curious. I think it's it's definitely outsold the Wii. I think. Um, I think it's on pace to beat the 3ds. Maybe not the DS, but the 3ds. But I I would really like to see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would really just like to see something more like that where they pull you outside. And that way, it's just a little bit more... Uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? It's more... You're more ingrained. You're more... It is 100% outsold the 3DS. Has it outsold the 3DS? Sweet. Done. By like 25 million units. Done. Done. I'm not is, sure about switch... the DS, though. No, not the, the, the DS. The DS sold like a ton. Oh yeah, and the DS has a hundred and what's it? One hundred and fifty-four million yeah, units. Like the Switch right now is at a hundred and three. Yeah, million. I believe this. I believe this. Yeah, yeah. The Switch is selling like crazy, man. It's gonna. It, the, it, it, yeah, it just passed the week. So I, I mean, I really, my honest answer is, I expect Scar Scarlet and Violet to be like the first real Pokemon Switch game. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I don't know that Sword and Shield really counts because I, I really do feel like it was probably developed as a 3DS game. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Which and, honestly impresses me even more. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think it just based on like the trains that they had for you to move from each island. Like I'm gonna put island in quotes because uh, <laughs> the the region is sectioned off into like four distinct places, right? Right. Uh, and because they intended you to take this train because the wild area probably didn't exist until they were like, oh, we're going to switch. Which is why right. the why, which is why the wild area kind of feels out of place, uh, in that it like everything else has a quite or like a much yeah, different. I feel like they place. were experimenting with it. And no, they really were. They really were. Uh, same with they Oklahoma realized. Pokemon. Well, they realized. Oh, this is a good idea. We need to just go hard more into it. Yeah. Hashtag uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Either way, gym leaders. <laughs> gym leaders. That was uh. I, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. I don't know. I would really like just to see something really, really different. I don't know. Make me yeah. more uh, enthralled. Make me more engaged. Make it immersive. That's the word. Make it more immersive. Immersive. Yeah. That's the word. Make, make it more immersive. Make these characters more memorable and the story yes. more memorable. No more Ramos, please. No more Ramos. And I think, I don't think that, to be fair, I don't think Sword and Shield has a Ramos. Yeah. I, I think, I think if any character from sword and shield like any gym leader that might have been forgettable it's not forgettable because of character design at minimum and because the character designs were much better than like in gen 6 i think i i still don't remember who the ghost gym leader is in in sword and shield yeah you mean uh alistair a little yeah alistair sure. guy with the, with the i don't remember him at all i i remember him because he had a shy guy mask yeah, I, I remember that, but I, I didn't remember his name or anything anything about. Oh, him that's better than that. Ramos, though. Who remembers anything else but Ramos? I love right. Ramos and his Goku. Nobody else remembers Ramos. It's Grass type right. gym leader, Gen Four, fourth gym leader. The Puckle you know, podcast. I just the vines is, for his puzzle. The Puckle oh, podcast is the sole reason that Ramos is relevant at all in the Pokemon community. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I hear people say Milo in the chat, but Milo got game. Yeah, so, uh, Milo's memorable <laughs> because he has no nose. Okay, like, right? Who's Ramos? You know, I mean, who's Ramos? Tell me who Ramos is. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, I think this is good. This is good, right? You guys have any final thoughts? Final. <laughs> Anything yeah, yeah, no. Uh, uh, the gyms are important and uh, a, a solid column of the Pokemon franchise. Uh, they've played around with it multiple times, depending on the gym, but we. Basically, we want them to flesh it out more and not it just be there just for the sake of it, just because you need badges to to uh, accumulate exactly. in order to get to the end. So make I them memorable, that. made them full flesh and make the make each character just almost every, almost like the wardens in PLA, favorite. in my in my opinion. Right. Almost like the wardens in PLA. Yep, yep, yep. Anything from you, Claude? Any final thoughts? I, 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 I'm good. I've said everything I need to say. <laughs> All right, then. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to end the topic here. And we're going to go ahead and kick it on over to our Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you guys on the flip flop. <laughs>
And welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 883, Arctivish, the fossil Pokemon. Its sword Pokedex entry reads, Though it's able to capture prey by freezing its surroundings, it has trouble eating the prey afterwards because its mouth is on top of its head. These Pokemon, these these fossil Pokemon are just travesties for existing. I ate them. And, uh, they're so sad. They're so like every one of them is just like this Pokemon it cannot really survive on its own. Yep. And <laughs> and it's just like, oh, that's sad. Right. right. What's worse is it like on the Bulbapedia page, they've got like the pictures from the uh, from like the anime on it. And it's right. hilarious where, like, it's definitely, like, the for, the guy's literally just taking Photoshop and shoving these things together. <laughs> and his stats are, like, actually okay. I'm actually not upset with these stats. It is a water ice type, but, like, it's uh, 90 HP, 90 attack, 100 defense, 80 special attack, 90 special defense, and 55 speed. And I still think it gets Ficious Rend, right? It gets Ficious Rend. Yeah, it does. So mm -hmm. good for it. Um, the abilities it gets to are somewhat interesting, like water absorb, eh. Uh, ice body, that's that's kind of interesting. You can do some okay. metal stuff with that. But slush rush. Slush rush is the way to go, though. Uh, slush rush is the way to go. So, yeah, let's jump into this team. This is a VGC team that uh, Sigma got to us, and it, it looks very fun because we've got our Arctivish. It's got its life orb. It's a slush rush. And it's jolly, and it's 252 attack, 252 speed, so it's going to come in, it's going to hit hard. Um, and it with that base 55 speed. <laughs> it's got Ficious Rend, Icicle Crash, Crunch, and Protect. It gives you a slightly different move, or like weakness pool versus like Dracovish. Um, but because we partner it with an Alolan Ninetales with Snow Warning, it can set the hail, get the Slush Rush, and Ficious Rend all day, all night. And... Yeah. It's uh, got two the nine tails itself has got a focus sash on it with uh, two fifty two special attack two fifty two speed timid nature. It's got aura veil because it's a, a Lola nine tails. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Yeah, blizzard ice shard and moon blast. It, I mean, there's a couple different ways this team can run as well. Looking at it, which makes it this team is fun because outside of just these two, where you're obviously just running like a slush rush duo, there's a lot more that this team can do. And yeah. it makes me very, very happy. So speaking of things that you get to do with it, uh, because the Alolan Ninetales is timid nature and has Ice Shard, it means its Ice-type moves are not going to be doing that much damage to things. Especially when your two big, like, sweepers on the team are a weakness policy Yevatol, level 50 with 84 HP, 76 defense, 156 special attack, 4 special defense, and 188 speed timid nature, with Snarl, Oblivion Wing, Heat Wave, and Protect. So you can Ice Shard right into that, activate the weakness policy, and then just obliterate Pokemon. And then we have the real fun part here, where we have a Solgaleo, uh, 252 HP, 180 attack, 76 special defense, adamant nature, with Trick Room, Sunsteel Strike, Earthquake, and Protect, and it is holding a Snowball. And if you were like me, like five minutes before getting this team, yes. you have no idea what Snowball is as an item. And let me tell you, it's an item where if you're hit by an ice-type move, your attack goes up one stage. So well, basically, you're for a little, oh, it's just huge. Especially when you're adamant. Yeah. So it's gonna... Imagine, like, turn one, Ninetales, Sogaleo, Aurora Veil, Trick Room, turn two, Ice Shard, something goes down. This is still worse weakness policy, Sogaleo, from last week, though, in my opinion. But... Oh, yeah, it's much worse, but, like, it's fun in the hail. The whole point is to enjoy the hail and whatnot. And you have two different big, like, restricted mons that can, you know, set up or get set up on or, like, be forced to set up for your teammates and then hail... go nuts. Does hail count as uh, ice type when it hits? No, I don't think so. No, it's just it's awesome. just it's just chip damage. It's just one sixteen. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah. So much ice. Uh, we're gonna go with more fire as well. We got uh, this is pretty basic. An Incineroar with safety goggles, ability intimidate. Its IV spread is two fifty two HP, four defense, and two fifty two special defense. 
with the careful nature. Its uh, attacks are fake out, blare fl uh, flare blitz, parting shot, and darkest lariat. I believe this plays out like a normal Incineroar would. Uh, yeah, like the safety goggles are the only weird thing, and that's just so you don't take hail damage or, or get spored. Like, that's it. Right. And then we end out the team with Thunderous with an Assault Vest, an ability defiant, and its EV spread of 84 HP, 164 attack, 4 defense, 4 special defense, and 252 speed with a jolly nature. And of course, its attacks are Lash Out, Wild Charge, Fly, and Brick Break. That's the team. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, yeah, the Thunderous is just there to do big damage. Um, this is a really short one, only because this team is very straightforward, but this is very fun. <laughs> yeah. And like Arctivish is so, I, it's so weird to see an Arctivish. Um, it can also play in the Trick Room too with the Sogaleo. Um, if you really mm. want to, like, you wanted to go like Sogaleo Arctivish, which is weird, but okay. I don't know. It, it's a very, it's a weird team only because uh, they put the weakness policy, I guess, on the Yveltal. <laughs> Hmm. And I don't know. I would have chosen a different Pokemon there. You could have put a different Pokemon in that Yelveltal slot, I feel like. And it would just be yeah. successful. Yeah. But, well, I don't know. I, Yveltal seems off to me. I'll have to play around with it. It sounds yeah, fun, though. It does sound like fun. And if you're a patron, you can get the shiny version of this team this week. Um, I Woo! mean, we've given away, I think we've given away so Sogaleo like three weeks in a row now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, and there Incineroar are, several are, times. Uh, and Thunderous. But if you want an Arctivish. Uh, a shiny Yveltal or a, a shiny Lola Ninetales this is the way to go. Um, maybe I'll just swap mm -hmm. the other three out with like random Pokemon I would want to do instead. So we'll, yeah. we'll definitely give it some thoughts there. All right. So, uh, all right. So that's it for the Pokemon of the episode. I guess it's time to jump on over to the mailbag. Mailbag. Send in your emails. And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where you can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we can read your thoughts on the show of the topic the week before. Last week we asked you guys what your favorite Pokemon were, and boy howdy! Did all of you want to let me know? Mm -hmm. Uh and we got a ton of emails. Unfortunately, they're all not going to make it on the show. If your email is not read right now, we will probably go ahead and read it or put it in the unread email section. Uh, there were a lot there, though. So we are going to go ahead, jump into it. But before I start, this segment, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! And as always, we'll give the Green Tauros badge to anybody who gives us uh, sparks a very good conversation out of this, but everybody here just like, I love you all. You, I've read through most of these emails and I will get through the rest of them this weekend. Uh, and you guys have a lot of interesting Pokemon and I'm very excited to, uh, to finish reading them, but thank you for sending it in. And hopefully we can get some of you to email next week as well. So on that note, let's jump into this first email. It is going to be from Numpty. And I believe Jushiro has this one. Yes, it says, how's it going, Thatch and co-host? I'm Numpty in the Discord, answering last week's topic, my favorite Pokemon, which hasn't changed after over 10 years, is Sceptile. The reason why Sceptile has been my favorite for so long is because of the colors, species, old signature move, personality, and more. The fact that uh, the, it's the first starter I ever used was Infernape, and my overall favorite Pokemon design in Gen 5, as controversial as it may be, tells me Sceptile will never not be my favorite. Gen 9 not, not, uh, got nothing on him. My, uh, my favorite types list... Wait. My favorite type list grass is obviously Sceptile's fire is Incineroar. Um, yeah, that's right. I stand by my bipedal boy, and it's not because he's a competitive monster. Water is Suicune, normal, uh, Mega Lupani, electric, Heliolisk, uh, Helio uh, Psychic, Celebi, Fighting Infernape, Rock Tyranitar. Man, Brown you really like your bipedal starter Pokemon, huh? Right, yeah. <laughs> Brown, Blitzor, 
Flying, Galarian Moltres, Bug Zizor, Poison Gengar, Dark Grimslar, and Ghost Decidueye, Ice Weevil, Steel Lucario, Dragon was either Mega Sceptile or a Reshiram. But to keep things more diverse, I will choose just, uh, Reshiram. And the fairy is Whimsicott. Hope you all don't hate my list too much. Cheers. No, it's we a pretty good list. list. We hate everybody's yeah, well, list. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's really good. I like it. I, I like mean, I can't list. tell any. He has a lot of grass types. Yeah. Uh, there's because there's not just Sceptile, but there's also Celebi, and there's also well, he was gonna do Mega Sceptile as well, and then not to mention we have the Decidueye, and also the uh, the Whimsicott at the end as well. So yeah, he has a, he has a lot of grass types there. He's gonna be the new Milo. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that has been uh, Numpty's Numpty's uh... email. Something's email. Yeah. All right. This next one is going to come to us from Ethan, and that's going to be you, Claude. All right. Hey, you gave us a picture. <laughs> you did. Uh, back at it again, uh, emailing you know, on last week's topic. Thatch, Seth, and Whimsicott's discussion ended up being so wholesome, and the joy that radiated through my AirPods validated why Pokemon is such a global phenomenon. It is truly because everyone can connect on their own batch of Pokemon one way or another. And that can be due to so many different factors. That being said, he shared a picture of all of his favorites. Yeah, I got it on stream um, for those of you watching live. But uh, for those of you who didn't, we have the picture. So I don't I'll, know. I'll quickly if he go through does it. Does he reference it? Uh, yeah, go through it. Just go through it. I'm just going to go through it. Uh, grass type is Tangela. Fire type is Arcanine. Water type is Quillfish. Normal type is Spinda. Electric type Raikou. Psychic Galarian Articuno. Fighting, fighting type Galarian Zapdos. Uh, rock type Tyrantrum, ground type Claydol, flying type Dragonite, bug type Ariados, poison type Galarian Slowking, dark type Galarian Moltres, ghost type Golurk, ice type Walrein, steel type Jirachi, dragon type Rayquaza, and fairy type Gigantum Max Grimstarl. I like this list because of the Quillfish. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, like, I love Quillfish. <laughs> also, uh, so I found that my favorites come about for one of two reasons either because of an experience I've had with them in a playthrough or because of a memory I've had with them in the TCG. That explains a lot. That explains a lot of these, actually. That explains a lot of these, yeah. Uh, In my opinion, which I know some of the community aligns with, uh, sprites look much better than... uh, Some of the sprites look much better than some of the new 3D models. Uh, Agreed. I think Mm -hmm. some of the older sprites are great. Gen 5. Uh, I try to round out my perception of a Pokemon design based on a card art more than... More so since 2013. For example, Inteleon Sniper reason. looks uh, really, really pops in its art from Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike, but the game looks like a bipedal blue and yellow Twizzler with eyes and finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> that is the greatest thing I've heard yet. All right. Uh, with that being said, my favorite Pokemon is Walrein. As a kid, I, start, uh, I started with Fire Red, but soon got a copy of Ruby from a friend. The funny thing is, I had Ruby for five years before I ever scooped up a Spiel. And that's because from 9 to 13 years old, I didn't even know the Shoal Cave existed. One day, I accidentally surfed north and stumbled upon the Blubber Puff, and soon after became my menacing chunky boy that swept Steven with Surf and Ice Beam. From there on, I thought it was, was kind of cool to have a wall rain all to, my, uh, all to myself as a favorite. At least in my friend group. Besides, it was probably 10 or 11 of us in the corner of the internet. Uh, besides, what is probably 10 or 11 of us in the corner of the internet? There are not a lot of people that I, I know that say Wolverine is their favorite Pokemon. Um, you don't see a lot of love for it in the TCG or merchandising. But what I enjoy is seeing Spiel become one of the top tier cute Pokemon. And its hooligan roly boy personality is beloved. And hopefully, soon I will have an alternate art Wolverine. But the Spiel cameo in Hisui and Milligan's art will have to do. Thanks for all you do. Bring... Uh, Bring forward great content weekly to our community. Best, Ethan. Well, we appreciate it, Ethan. I like that he does the he does the TCG art because yeah. the TCG art is actually very good most of the time. Hundred percent. It kind of rolls into what Seth said last week too when we had the discussion, where he said that he likes to keep his like he keeps a physical list essentially like this of a Pokemon of each type, and then he just like slots in a Pokemon card of that Pokemon. With his favorite mm, yeah. art of that Pokemon on it, which is a very cute idea, and I really like it. But thank you for sending that in, Ethan. We really appreciate it. 
All right, our last email today is going to come to us from the Purple Knight. So he has, uh, he's also sent us a thing. So I, oops, I will send that onto the, uh, the stream here in a moment once I accidentally put my uh, camera back uh, because I deleted the wrong thing. Because that's just how we do. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so uh, this email is from the Purple Knight. Greetings and salutations, Puckle Crew. I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's excited to write in on <laughs> write in on the topic this week, since favorite anything seems to generate a lot of interest and responses. So I'll do my best to keep this short and sweet. Raiko and Tapu Fini are the only two legendaries on my list, and I wasn't going to include them originally since I felt like that felt like a cop out. However, their performance in last year's summer league as a lead and walls, respectively, I couldn't deny them the spots they earned on this chart. <laughs> I'm a big fan of manga, hence Infernape and Grimmsnarl's appearances. Dragon Ball Z was my gateway into the true gateway into the art. Uh, and Grimmsnarl looks way too much like an insane final boss. It wouldn't be a crime. It would be a crime not to include him as a manga lover. Decidueye, Lycanroc, Rillaboom, and Toxtricity all became immediate favorites upon release, though for different reasons. I've mentioned before that I'm a musician and that Thwacky is my spirit Pokemon in previous emails. The instrument <laughs> I play primarily are drums and electric guitar, both progressive metal punk, uh, punk, nice, nice. punk pop styles, and pop punk styles. Um, they And they're each personified so well in these two Pokemon. As for Decidueye and Lycanroc, I was a big fan of the Guardians of Gahul series growing up, and Owls and Wolves are big characters in those books. Also, in my head headcanon, Decidueye is basically a ranger apparition with his ability to shoot arrows and use a sword with Leaf Blade with Lycanroc as its trusted tracker and guard wolf, which is just so cool to me. <laughs> you know what? I'm into it. I'm okay with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Corviknight is a cool bird whose who shiny tells its whole story well. A black knight based on a raven, which is an ill-omened bird who finds redemption and becomes a white knight. That's one of the coolest stories Pokemon has told with a simple palette swap, in my humble opinion, of course. Uh, shinies are not just simple palette swaps anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Aegis Slash is my second favorite out of all of these, not because of its former uber competitive status, but because it's a ghost sword who's looking for, for looking out for number one. It wants mm -hmm. to rule the world, and it's look and it's going to look killer doing it as well. Also, that shiny. Man, what a shiny. That's so true, though. Yeah. Shiny, shiny Aegislash is great. Also, Aegislash in general is like, I don't know. Like, I, I think instead of Aegislash, I like Honage better. Yeah. And, and I think most of that just, like, stems back to, like, the reveal cycle of X and Y where they only showed Honage. Oh, big Dude Blade fan. Uh, I know, I, the only thing that bothers me about the Honage line is that everybody draws, like, fan art of people wielding them. Which right. is like literally a big no no. Like literally the first thing we learned about them is like, no, do not do that. Literally it do not die. Yeah, do not do that. That is how it kills you. <laughs> because like let me see if I can find like a hone edge entry. Cause like it's it's literally the worst thing that you could possibly do is try to wield a hone edge. Uh Apparently, this Pokemon is born when a departed spirit inhabits a sword. It attaches itself to people and drinks their life force. If anyone dares to grab its yes. hilt, it wraps a blue cloth around that person's arm and drains that person's life energy completely. <laughs> like this, you is hold insane. the sword, you die. You hold the sword, you die. Like that's literally every single entry about Honage. Yep. Uh, and it's just like, and every time people draw people wielding it, I get sad because I'm like, you did not pay attention. Right. I think same with Dewblade too. Like it, it's just like very upsetting. But yeah. Okay. Moving on in this email, I need to find out where I was. But I was reading this email about Honage. <laughs> However, my favorite out of all of these Pokemon is notably my avatar on Discord. That honor goes to my boy Haxorus. A freaking dragon that appears similar to a dinosaur, has an axe for a head, 
and possesses a massive attack of 147 is insanely appealing. But what made me love this thing so much is the first half of its black dex entry. They, they are kind, but can be relentless when defending their territory. This creature with insane strength is naturally kind-hearted, making it the perfect battling companion to me. It's not fighting to injure, but to purely better itself to defend what's important to it. The rest that I didn't mention are simply ones that I have fond memories with during playthroughs. So I cut the email here, since it was obviously not short and sweet. Oh well, never hurts to be ambitious. Thanks for taking the time, and I'll catch you later. Your squire, the Purple Knight. But yeah, it's a, yeah, it's like really, I yeah, I, I the Honage thing bothers me, and it, nobody brought yeah. it up. I brought it up, but like, <laughs> it really bothers me. But that is it. Uh, who do we think deserves the Green Taurus badge out of these? Anybody? Anybody? Who doesn't does? have it? Is the question. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. We just give it to them I'm and they get a double. Pretty I'm pretty sure the purple knight has it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then give it to somebody else. We'll give it to Ethan. I was going to give it to Ethan because I like Spiel. Ethan. That done. is true. Spiel is cute. I love yeah. Spiel. It's, it's our favorite emote bad. that we have in the Discord is I the happy Spiel. That is true. We use that all the time. Have, yeah. And I always have it when people have obscure Pokemon favorites. Yes. Like yeah. not the, the same ones. <laughs> Absolutely. Purple knight had Charizard on his favorite list. I, I just can't. Oh, shit. that's a travesty, actually. Uh, that's a travesty. more like a travesty because I, oh, I think Travis don't just... chat. All right. Well, if you want to email us next week at pucklepodcast at gmail.com, you can let us know what kind of gym leader you would be or how would you like the gym leaders to be run in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Send that to us at Poco, or pucklepodcast at gmail.com. In the meantime, if you want to hang out with us, make sure you check out PuckleDiscord.com. You can, of course, always follow us on social media over on Instagram, face, uh, Facebook, and Twitter uh, at Puckle Podcast at all of those. Uh, you can also go ahead and uh, watch us on YouTube. You, we stream on Twitch a lot. Uh, well, I did this week. I'll probably just do like one or two days next week <laughs> instead of trying to do a ton of days. So... Uh, we do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast. And if you want to support us, the best way to do so is to go over to Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast, where you can get some rewards um, and help us do what we do. And we appreciate everybody who can support us in that way, or and even the people who can just listen. Everybody, the best support is just listening and hanging out. So yeah. make sure you do that. But here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, I have been Trainer Thatch. Some say Jashiro. I've been Claude Nine. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Mm -hmm.